Ooh, that was a little heavier. All right, guys, what's up, my friends and fellow collectors out there? Welcome to another figure unboxing. Today, we got in the house the Hot Toys Darth Maul from Solo, a Star Wars story. Let's get to this. Thank you, my friends, for joining me for another unboxing video. If this is your first time on the channel, we do a lot of talk of collecting. We go on toy hunts, statue figure reviews, and all kinds of other geek stuff like that. So if you're into that kind of content, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on all of the content. And if you're into badass figures like this or statues or any kind of high-end collectibles like that, make sure you check out Comic Concepts. They have some really awesome pricing, the best I've seen around, and that's where I've been getting most of my hot toys lately. So make sure you check out Comic Concepts. I'll leave a link in the description below. So with all that out of the way, let's check out this box. All right, so there is the box. This is a much wider box than the other Hot Toys figures that I've uh, had in the house. This one is a DX version of Darth Maul from Solo, A Star Wars Story. So this is how he looked at the end of the movie. But let's get close up and personal on this so you know what time it is. Extreme close up! All right, so here's your box. As you can see, it looks very much like every other one of the Star Wars boxes. You got an image of the figure in the front. I really love the way this figure looks right here. They did a good job on that. That portrait looks pretty awesome. The side of the box has more black and gray uh, colorway. On the back, you have all of your credits, DX series, Hot Toys. And then you have the same thing on the side. So that's what's here. And this slides off. And then you have this awesome looking cover or box. I love the feel of this. It has kind of like... Um, has some kind of like textured feel to it, almost like lentinier uh, in the way that it feels. And then it reflects uh, light pretty well. So you can see there, so it's kind of like a metallic finish to it. So a really nice look to that. Uh, you got Darth Maul again up at the front, you know, looking like uh, Hannibal Lecter with the... <laughs> and then you got the uh, Star Wars Darth Maul right there. Uh, this on the side, he says more Darth Maul. You got a little bit more of the lightsaber and it has that same type of feel to it. And you got the credits all over again in the back. And then from the looks of this one here, this one slides out like this. On the side, you get a little credit of Disney. So there you go, DX18. All right, so nice hard box. And then, and then, you have this plastic. All right, and then you're left with this once you get the uh, box out and the, and the plastic all off. So it's got a, uh, a cover plate right here with looks like something that comes off like a keychain or something. It's got the Crimson Dawn logo. Um, let me see if that's accurate. Yeah, it's a keychain. That is cool. So this slides right out and you get a keychain. And on the back it says Star Wars Hot Toys DX. So you can walk around and put that on your key ring and represent. That's what you want to do. And then you have uh, the figure and nothing else. It's got another cover on here. Let's take that out. Okay. Man, lots of covers on this one. All right, and then you have the figure right. Ooh, I don't want that to fall out yet. And then you got the figure right here. So you have all of the accessories. You have all of the accessories. You have uh, the figure itself and then the swap out hands. So let's take a look at all the accessories up close and see what comes with this guy. All right, so this one really does come with a lot of accessories, a lot more than, than, you know, than others. I guess that's why it's the DX for the Deluxe. So first up, you have this hollow transmission of uh, Darth Maul himself sitting on the throne like you saw at the end of the Solo movie. I don't know why this figure comes with this. It makes no sense because he is Darth Maul, so why would he be looking at a hollow transmission of himself? But I guess if you were to get the uh, Kira figure, if they ever made it, uh, you can use this to go along with it. So I guess it's like future collecting, you know, so you can have a di perfect display. So that's the first one. You also get a hollow transmission of Kira herself. This one here does make sense to me. I do kind of wish that it had some kind of light up uh, base for it to put on, but I don't see one here. So maybe I do it if I go through it, but uh, yeah, maybe you can put up a light up base beneath it and it's uh, clear uh, plastic or uh, resin. So it will uh, transfer light through it. So neat. All right, you get his uh, solo version of his lightsaber, his double-bladed lightsaber with the big fang here on the front. All right, and then the uh, back like that, so you can see. Really nice job with the way this looks. It's not metal, this is plastic, but they did a nice job on the paint. 
and I like all the details that they threw on it, like the switch, red switch over there, and uh, that looks that looks really cool. So very nicely done. You get the Crimson Dawn uh, necklace that he wears at the end of the movie. So you have that. All right. You have a couple of uh, motion lightsaber effects so that you can put into the uh, lightsaber itself. And you can make it look like it's uh, in motion and moving. You have a light up version of the uh, hand wearing the, or hand holding the uh, lightsaber blade. So there is that. I've already installed the batteries. There's a plastic uh, sleeve that you just open up a little bit like that and you can give you access to the switch. So then you can turn the switch on you can see uh, that it glows, that it has a light source from it on both sides. So pretty neat. You have less motion in this hand. You can twist a little bit and you can, you know, cock back and forth like that, but you don't have that extending that you can get with the basic hand. So if you're one that likes to have light, there's probably gonna be a little bit of limitation in the way that the uh, blade works, all right? Uh, you have his chair. Now, this chair is really nice. Look at the detail in that. So this is all like a fabric material that they put on it, or it could be sculpted that they just painted to make it look like fabric. It feels like fabric. So, you know, that's really cool. Very nice texture work in that and, and uh, sculpting and painting to give it that, that effect. And then you have this detail all along the sides. So very cool. And it feels like, or looks like it just sits in place on the base. Your base is really big. So there is the base, but the base has like this textured floor and it also has a really nice feel to it. Very, very big base. It doesn't have the nameplate on this one. Oh, no, I bet it does. There it is. So you actually would have it like kind of like at an angle, I guess. So there you go. So it says Star Wars Darth Maul. All right. So cool. You have the uh, crotch holder, which is very big and heavy on this one. So I like that um, has this part here. So I guess this would make for uh, so that you can have like some kind of uh, jumping motion, which I'm going to try to give him so you can have like a very dynamic acrobatic pose like Darth Maul is known for. So very cool. All right. You get two uh, clear regular lightsaber blades that you can put into the lightsabers lacking motion. So that's neat. You get an array of swap out hands. All right, so you got his fist kind of hand, you know, like where he's holding the uh, lightsaber. You got the same thing on the opposite side. All right, you got kind of like a force push type of hand. So there you go. You have um, this hand, which looks more like just a relaxed hand, or it could be like maybe a transfer hand for when he's transferring one hand to the other with the, with the lightsaber. Might use it for that. Here's another one that looks just like that for the opposite hand. And then you have a force push for the opposite hand, all right? The last thing that we get is this piece. I gotta look up to see what this is exactly. I don't know where this goes. So I'll let you guys know that a little bit later in the video. All right, let's take a look at the figure. <laughs> this is so freaking cool. Oh man, this is dope. All right, so here is the Darth Maul figure. Uh, man, the detail on this is utterly fantastic. I love the portrait on this guy. Uh, there are some things that I want to suggest, but I'm going to suggest that a little bit later. Uh, just let's talk about this. Oh, this looks so good. Great job on this one. All right, guys, let me bring you in for an extreme close up. Extreme close up! All right, check out that portrait in all of its detail. Wow. I think they did a fantastic job on the portrait. He's got that nice, brooding, angry look that you expect to see from Darth Maul. Really love the paint job on it. Everything about it looks great. The only thing that I want to suggest that I said just a few seconds ago is that I wish that they would come out with more alternate portraits with their figures. I would pay for that. I think it would be cool, especially with a figure like this guy, because when you have him in motion, you know, he's very passionate when he fights. So he's screaming and yelling and that kind of thing. It'd be cool to have a, a portrait like that that you could swap out for when you get to do the uh, acrobatic poses like we're going to try to do today. So I, that's the only thing that I would suggest Hot Toys to do because I would definitely be on board for uh, something like that. The uh, cut and sew on the outfit is beautiful. They did a nice job. It has this kind of pleatherly leather type of feel to the uh, tunic itself. 
The belt looks really nice. I love the details that they have in the belt, like this little uh, belt clip here, um, the buckle over here. They got that little red part to it and everything looks nice. I like the texturing in the uh, arms here. There's a lot of nice detail in this outfit. You got his hood and the hood feels like there's some posability to it. So it doesn't feel like there's a wire in running inside of it, but the material itself is thick, which I like. And uh, I think this would be is a better option than having uh, a wire running through it because you can actually fold it and make it do things. So um, very cool. There is a wire, it's definitely thin. Um, you have your hands, check out that. You got this, uh, this here is plastic. So this is hard plastic right here. That is gonna probably get in the way of the positioning of the hand. So we'll take a look at that and see how that affects it, things. The lower part of the tunic, like I said, has that leathery feel to it. And then this material here also has some posability to it. So you can see that you can flap it and make it move into uh, shape. So you can give it some nice motion. Now, what I really like about this, and I'm sorry, Darth Maul, I'm gonna have to look under your, under your pants, is, uh, is the legs. I think the legs are really nice. This here, I think, looks such, has such nice detail. Look at the way you can see all of the exposed wiring and pistons uh, all in the, in the feet, uh, and that is, is really good. Um, the newer version of Darth Maul, the one from the animated series, has more of just like a metallic boot. And I think if they were to take and swap these legs out onto that one, I think it would just, it would make that one look way better than, than it does. Uh, I do like the, the tunic on that one, but it just when you see this kind of detail on, uh, on a figure, you know, this is, this is really nice, nice detail on it. So, all right, and that is your close up of this figure. Let's get him in some, uh, some articulation and see what exactly he can do. What, is it, what his limitations are. Let's see the limitations of the dark side of the false. <laughs> all right, so portrait, you can turn the head left to right. You can actually get it all the way around. It's got a loose uh, head to it. You can cock the head left and right like that. And then uh, you can look about, oh, what's this? It's a magnet. Oh. It's got a magnet for all the more reason why this should be, why you should have optional portraits for this guy. You got nothing but a magnet holding this thing. So you can go about that far down so you don't have that much range going down. You can look that far up. So you have a lot more up than you do down. All right. Um, that's that. So on the arms, you can go that far out. You can go about that far back and and about that far forward, okay? At the elbow, feels like there's a double joint there so you can get a pretty good pullback to your face. So that's cool. Let's see if there's any turn. There's a little bit of turn at the top of the bicep so you could twist, but then you know, the, the clothes get in the way. Now it's cool about this one is the clothes are baggy enough that you have a lot more motion than some other uh, figures. So you can actually get that twist really nicely. All right, in the forearm, there's also no, okay, in the forearm, there's no turn. It's only up in the upper bicep. Uh, at the wrist, you do have a turn action all the way around, so you could do that. Um, the, yeah, see, there's limitations because of this, this uh, the sleeve. So it doesn't really feel like you have a lot of range of motion in the hand at all. You could twist it, and you have some slight uh, cocking back and forth like that, but, you don't have too much, very little of this kind of range where you can extend and pull back because the uh, cuff kind of gets in the way just slightly. Uh, you can pull back a lot more than you can go in. So, all right. At the chest, you can go that far down at the chest and about that much. There's not a lot of range there because of the clothes. They get kind of in the way. Same thing with the twisting at the waist. Not much that you could do with the twisting at the waist. You probably would have to loosen up the belt a little bit and pull the tunic out just to get a little bit more range, but not much range there at all. All right, in the legs, in the legs you have uh, that far forward on the thigh, okay? And hardly anything going backwards. So you have about that motion going backwards, all right? You can twist at the top of the thigh just slightly but not much there at all. With the knee, you have a double joint at the knee, so you can go all the way back like that. All right, 
at the leg. And I'm trying to be very careful here. This wires make me feel very scared. <laughs> you have this kind of range at the ankle, so it can go forward. It's kind of neat. It even moves like it would a um, like like a mechanical leg would move. You can see the piston kind of moving forward and back so that's kind of cool so uh you got about that much motion going forward and about that going back is a stop at the top of the ankle that doesn't allow for much more and you can go side to side like that okay there is no oh, no i lied there's a little bit twisting but this is at i think still at the top yeah this is at the top of the thigh there's no twisting at the uh, calf or the ankle or anywhere below the knee all right so that's your range of motion let's get him in some poses and see what he looks like. All right, so let's get the more boring pose out of the way. This is the iconic pose from the movie. Uh, you have him sitting down in the chair. This is when he's talking to Kira at the very end of the movie. Uh, I like that you're able to get him in the chair and have him sitting down. There is some, uh, some a lot of fight with the legs, uh, mostly because I'm a little bit afraid with all the wiring and everything that I'm gonna break it. So I kind of, you know, you have to kind of push down on the back of the thighs a little bit and uh, be very delicate with the uh, legs themselves. The arms position themselves very good, which I like. The hood, I love the material of the hood, and I love that you can get this more relaxed and natural feel to the hood versus some of the other ones that I've uh, had to play with. Um, but it, it's not deep enough. I feel like they should have they should have made it a little bit deeper so that you can get the, the hood to, co to come over a little bit more on uh, Darth Maul's face. And I think that would uh, look a little bit more uh, realistic is because like right now it, it doesn't really sit the way I would like it. Like I would like it to be a little bit more down, you know, maybe almost at his, at his eyebrows. Um, so I may have to do a little bit more playing with it, but the back horns uh, tend and the top horns tend to uh, pull back on the hood. Uh, otherwise you can get a, a real nice positioning of it uh, and you can get a, a nice relaxed feel uh, sort of toward the back of the hood, which I think is nice. Uh, so very cool looking pose here. All right, so now that we got the relaxed pose out of the way, let's see some action. All right, already favorite pose. Loving this pose right here. Okay, so I got this one off of the Clone Wars. He has a little bit more pullback with the lightsaber, which I like. He's like in the main, in the middle of a fight, uh, which I dig. Awesome looking balance. Uh, awesome, awesome looking feel to this piece. Um, it has a lot of balance to it. So you can see I don't even have the crotch grabber on him right now. So he's holding pretty well. I chose to throw on the uh, lightsaber uh, light up hand so you guys can get a, a look at the light up, which I'm gonna turn off the lights right now and give you guys a quick look at that. Um, I like that you can take and uh, pose the uh, tunic just slightly at the bottom, giving it a little bit more flare, like some wind is blowing around him and everything. Uh, so I think that came out really, really good. And like I said, best part of all is that I didn't have the crotch grabber on it because I, I hate putting crotch grabbers on my, on my figures. I like to have it freestanding if I can. Um, really cool. All right, so let's uh, take a look at the light up so I can show you guys how bright that lightsaber is. It's not that bright in my opinion. I feel like it's really bright here at the front part of the, uh, the emitters, but once it gets out to the tips, it gets really dark and I think it's just because it's, it's too long. Um, so you can see right there, uh, you can see the light up effect right here is really nice, uh, but then it starts to die out as it gets to the uh, front there. And the same problem happens as you turn the lightsaber here. So you can see that it lacks the, uh, the light up at the far ends. I don't know how they could take and, and fix that, um, you know, without using some kind of LED uh, like you would on a, on a full lightsaber that you would buy. Uh, but, you know, for what it is, it looks pretty good. It's still, for me, it's not gonna probably be the way that I would use it because you have a lack of um, a positioning with the wrist that you would get with the uh, other hand. So if it was me, I wouldn't be using the light up blade anyway, especially since batteries die. So that's it. All right, let's get another pose going. All right, here's my attempt to do the uh, crotch grabbing, or in this case, the waist grabbing uh, pose. Got him jumping up in the air. Trying to channel the whole XM Studios vibe of the Darth Maul statue with this one. So I don't like this pose that much, even though it, it is kind of cool. Um, there are some limitations to it because of the clothing or something, the arms don't have the full range that you can get back, right? So you can, with the arm here, you can go up almost this far like this, but not fully back. And then since you don't have any twisting at the forearm, you don't really get enough range back to get it high enough in the air. Other problems that I had too was that at the wrist, 
the hand kept popping out. They got such little nubs that hold the, the, the wrist in place and the uh, cufflink gets, um, or the sleeve or whatever you want to call that of the, of the gloves, uh, gets in the way. So it kind of pops the hand out of place. So it makes it a little more difficult. Uh, other thing too, is that since you can't tilt the head forward down enough, um, his, his horns kind of keep the hand, the other hand from coming further or connecting with the, with the lightsaber. So it's kind of a fail right here. Um, but I mean, this is something that you can do. You can have him jumping up in the air like that. Let's get him in one more pose and then I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, and there's the final pose. Another pose that I like a lot. So it's not very action-packed, but it is kind of action-packed in a way. So I got this one here from the uh, Clone Wars. As you can see, it guys have a little bit of a balancing problem with this pose, so you may want to use the grabber when you want to do this, but I can get it kind of to balance. So this pose I got from the end of the Clone Wars when uh, Darth Maul is challenging, or actually Ahsoka Tano is challenging Darth Maul. And then, you know, he kind of pulls back and he says, you know, the apprentice has one more lesson to learn. So um, that's this pose here. It's got a very samurai type of pose to it, which I like. You know, he's got his hand like that, like, you know, come. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, really dig the way this looks. Uh, and probably with this figure, because of the limitations of your, uh, of your flexibility with him, uh, probably these are the type of poses that you're going to want to do instead of those like jumping acrobatic poses. But I'm always interested to see what you guys have with, with all that. I did find something. So just beneath the hand, there are these little uh, plastic um, or like, you know, cloth material, uh, leathery covers that cover the wrist nubs. And then this is what's preventing the hands from uh, locking into place very well. It's nice, but I don't understand even the reason why you need this because it's black. So, you know, you're not even going to be able to tell. So they slide right off. I just took it off and it makes the hand so much easier to pop in and out of place. So if that's, if that's what you want to do and put them in some poses, take these things off. These things are, are useless and they just get in the way and they cause frustration. Uh, so it's something that you don't really need. Um, overall, I am really happy with the way this figure looks. Uh, let's throw on his, his chain. He has a little bit, a bit of bling here. So put that on. So you got a little bling there that he can have. Okay. Um, overall, I'm really, really happy with the way this figure looks. Uh, there's a little bit of lack of limitation with the posing, which, you know, I kind of wish it would not be there, but because of the uh, authenticity of the uh, costume and the uh, sculpting and the design of this whole thing, I think it's a, a really awesome figure uh, to have of Darth Maul, especially if you like to collect Darth Maul and you can have him throughout the years. But this is actually an older version of Darth Maul right here. Um, so really uh, awesome figure, I think. Fantastic. Only thing that I would say is I wish it had a little more posability and I wish that they gave you a swap out portrait with a little more angry, uh, you know, yelling portrait. I think that would be awesome. Uh, but anyway, that's my thoughts on it. I think this is really cool. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this Darth Maul figure. Which one was your favorite pose? Uh, were you able to get him in a more dynamic jumping pose? If you were, you know, I'm interested to see that. Make sure you head over to the Marvelous Knights group and post your poses for this Darth Maul figure. I would be very interested to see what you guys have been able to come up with. Uh, so thanks guys again for joining me. Until next time, keep it marvelous and may the force be with you.